it's time. It's really time to either create or refresh your personal brand. Let's talk about that today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 193, and you can find all of our show notes, as always, over at WBNLpodcast.com or catch our live uh, video on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and type in. Oh, what do we? Oh, WBNL coaching. Huh, that's what it is. <laughs> Matt, Jan, WBNL coaching, something. You can something find like us. that. I don't know. We got a few hundred videos up there. You can go and, and view them. That'll be great. Jen O'Brien. 193 episodes. What? I know. Kind of weird. I was thinking just about that yesterday, thinking we're getting very close to 200 episodes. And there's, we'll you know, have a special 200. I, I was watching. Do you, you ever watch Brian Williams? On MSNBC. Yes. Okay. Yes, well, you know, t- tonight is his last night, actually. He's gone. This He's left and he's retiring on to the third part of his life. Anyway, it, it dawned on me. He, he, was, he made this big thing when he closed last night about podcasts and how everybody has a podcast. And um, in very short order, there will be so many people podcasting that no one will be listening to any podcasts. Yeah, that's about right. Be- right. Exactly. And then he said, so to that note and to that end. I finally have a podcast. So he he introduced this whole podcast that he's going to be in, which actually sounds kind of interesting. It is a podcast about moments in life. It's called, um, oh, what was the name? It was really, it's a great concept. It's like, um, uh, it's about interrupting the news. Uh, yeah. when, when news will come in, right. Or this breaking back to you. No, I forgot what it's called. It had a great name anyway. And he just takes snippets of, of historic things that have happened over, you know, the past 30 years and talk about it and talk about how that affected the particular news cycle of the particular time, which I think is That's a fascinating thing. So I don't know. Kind I like think it's behind cool. the scenes of being a news anchor. A little bit. Yeah. Years. It's like, you know, we have this whole thing planned and all of a sudden, you know, nine 11 or, you know, <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden everything changes. I mean, you, you're there kind of ad libbing during the history of the world changing. So I thought, well, and this is how he will continue to keep create his personal brand or refresh or move on to his brand by using something called a podcast. But to that point, uh, we do appreciate all the listeners that we do have out there because we know that the podcast field is very full. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So what are we going to talk about today, Jennifer? And we're going to talk about refreshing our brand. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a it's perfect. We were talking last week, I believe it was was it last week or no, it was the video I did for the channel uh on um oh yeah. Uh I was talking about giving your profiles like for right. real estate agents, give your profiles a refresh and go get reviews. How important that is and how many people still aren't doing that. Well, this is just a good uh, you know, jumping off point to to go deeper and talk about what really is your brand. And where are all the areas that you need to take a look at this? And and we've been doing this at WBNL Coaching through this past year. year. We have really, really done a redo on our brand. And, and I'm telling you, it does make a difference when you really are committed to it. And then you start seeing all these things we talk about over the yep. years, Matt. Make yep. sure somebody can see your stuff anywhere and they know it's you. We weren't 100% on that until we really had our team help us with, That's right. with um, you know, maybe just giving it a tweak refreshing it is a great word to say but we had our team help us with changing the logo slightly and just really owning the color schemes that we wanted right i mean and just that alone um really just sharpened things up for us and got you know and then you just stick with it absolutely and i think that we can attribute a lot of our um additional uh uh followers to that you know, to that consistency, consistency, right? exactly. That is the word. Exactly. We're going to have that a couple times here in this conversation. All right. Um, because uh, consistency is what it's all about, right? Consistency, clarity, and communication. Those are the three C's of branding. I, I would say more than anything else. So it is a great time to refresh your brand. Jan and I were talking yesterday when we were coming up with a topic for today that a lot of people do take a little bit of downtime this time of year, which we don't recommend. Although we're into the last three weeks of the year. I can't I mean, really believe. On. That we are As we far. record this, there's only yeah. three weeks left. So there's not much more time to lollygag before you better be ready to go <laughs> and start the new year because it's going to be starting with or without you come January 1st. So yeah, might as well go on that, right? But have a nice that, goal. You- yeah, maybe you do have a couple, a little bit of time to, you know, to sit down and maybe just take a look at it. And actually, it should be a part of your business plan all the time to look mm-hmm. at and make sure that all the parts of your brand are, you know, moving along. Wouldn't you agree, Jan? I do, hundred percent. 
Let's go in just to for a second and just talk about why branding in the first place. And Jan touched on it just a little bit, you know, just talking about consistency. But Jan, let me ask you a question. When you think of branding, what do you think of? When just out, off the top of your head, what do you think of? Of course, it's branding? the big ones. It's like Nike and Coca-Cola and all that, right? That's what that's what when you think about branding, that's what pops into my head, you know, the big ones that Right. You could just see a, you could see a logo, or you could see the swish or something, and you know what it is. But let's let's take that a step farther, Jan. And I want to ask you a question about that when it comes to real estate, because I'm going to tell you a lot of people start thinking about branding, and they think about you know I'm going to be maybe not I'm going to be the next Apple or the next Nike, but you know you're branding in a really big way, and I don't know that that's the important part of branding in real estate. How do you feel about branding? In real yeah, estate? no, I mean when we're talking like on a you know on a commercial thing that's what the ultimate goal yeah, is that somebody right. sees that's, something that's, that's, and they know what you and they know what you stand for not just like what it is or they know who you are and you know good overall brand and and marketing sets up what makes you unique or different right and that's where real estate that's what we have to be able to do as real estate agents is is uh you know it's not like the big uh the balloon means remax right? right um it's it's as an individual person we need to be able to for me like it's very important to me right now i want to be known as this local hyper local specialist in this tampa Tampa Gulf Coast living is the brand I want to create right. something around that. And what does that mean when you're working with me? Right. I think when you're branding as a real estate agent, it's very, imp when people, most people think about branding, they think about colors, logos. and Yeah, that exactly. Thing, they right? jump right to that. And I think that's really important. It is a part of, obviously it's a big part of your brand, but it's not what you need to focus on when you're creating a brand from scratch or when you're going back in to refresh your brand. It's not about, okay, I've been, you know, let's jump in and change all of my colors. No, what you need to do is you need to figure out the critical things that clarify what you are doing in your business. And just what Jan just said. I mean, obviously the the advantages of branding, you know, are standing out in the crowd. Believe me, the crowd is saturated. And I think it's interesting, Jan, because you've been talking about this a lot. You came from the Vegas market where it was, it's extremely competitive, especially, you know, YouTube, like for example. Yeah. But now you are in Florida in an area that is not so much saturated. So there's opportunity to stand out. Absolutely. So talk about that a little bit. I mean, just the difference between those two things. Yeah, I was just having a conversation with Vicky on our team in, in Vegas. And, and I'll, I'm going to use her as an example because she's she in Vegas in particular in the, the platform where you have chosen not only at WBNL Coaching, but for our for our real estate business in Florida and Nevada is YouTube right. and video. And there is a lot of competition in the Vegas area. There's a lot of young folks, uh, young and, you know, older, but there's a lot of folks that are being consistent with videos and doing well compared to where I am right now, where there's a handful and they're not, you know, there's a handful that are doing it really well, but it's, but I think there's an opportunity. And then on our team in Pahrump, Pahrump is, you're familiar with Pahrump, right? Absolutely. Over the hump in Pahrump. Yep. You know, about an hour away is the rural area that's really growing. And this is where one of our team members, Vicky lives and she loves it there. And she just did a video. So excited to get it up on the channel for uh, living Las Vegas and Henderson and Pahrump uh, because it's unique and there's not a ton of competition there. It's really going to help her brand as this local specialist who knows, who loves and lives in Pahrump and is going to be the person for you to go to. She can also help you in Vegas and Henderson and all sure. that, but it's really awesome. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do out here where I am in the Tampa Gulf Coast area. Like I have three or four cities that I really like to focus on that to me make up the Tampa Gulf Coast. Yeah, once that gets uh, posted, we'll put a link to that video down in our show notes as well too, so you can get an example of what that mm -hmm. looks like. But let me ask you another question, Jan. Uh, if you're in a saturated market, do you say, uh, too saturated, no. I can't do it? Great so, question. All right. No, because I think you can stand out in what, this is what you're alluding to, I think is, what makes you stand out in That's a right. sea of other people who That's specialize right. maybe in the same area? And you know what that, you'll have to discover that. It could be your uniqueness, the way that, if you're gonna choose video as a platform, it may be the way that you come across. Um, everyone has something to share. We all have something to share. And by the way, it doesn't have to be video. You could have a yeah. unique specialty inside that sea of, of everybody else where maybe you're the person who helps people stage because you're like into interior designing. You have to dig deep and figure out what is it that makes you, and like, what are you passionate about? We talk about this all the yeah. time here. And we're gonna keep talking about right? it. Right, okay, yeah. so anyway, yeah, you can definitely stand out.
Yeah. So the advantages, like we said, this is standing out. It you know branding right when you get the brand right is going to create your or uh, strengthen your credibility, build customer loyalty, showcase really what your value proposition is, and that's really huge, right? You need to identify that if you haven't. And I know this sounds like so basic, but if you haven't really decided what you're going to be and what you're going to stand for and what you're going to deliver to your clients or what your experience is, then you, you're already dead in the water. That's what branding is all about. And then, of course, everything with branding leads to uh, repeat and referral business as, as, uh, as, as time goes on, if if you're doing it right, right? So let's talk about the basics of which we already started covering. It is what you are all about, your ethos, right? So what is the business? What is the vision of your business? What is your unique value proposition? Uh, uh, I think I dare say a lot of people have not gone through the process of of I agree with these things out. Yeah, right. You know, what are some of the things that define you? You know, what do your clients think about you? If you've been in the business a while, what has their experience been? Right. I don't know. It's interesting. And is there something that you really enjoy doing? Is there something that you can really specialize in? Because that is going to always come through in the way you talk and the mm -hmm. way you actually represent yourself to clients. Jan talks about farming and niche farming and and you know uh, becoming a local market expert all the time and it is Jan's niche uh, those things are her niche I mean she comes alive when she starts talking about things in a particular area I, I'll tell you over the last how many times how long you've been doing those local market newsletters Jan a couple of years now right yeah in Vegas yeah 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 we're definitely into second year of that right and they make a difference correct yeah People look for them. I mean, the people in our database look for that. They like it. But if you were just putting out something with just some stats on it, it would no. not be the same thing as what you do. No, right? not at all. Yeah, because you got to put your flavor, your your spin, your experience, your you know who you are, and that's this is why I like the idea. It's a great example you're using. Don't don't so, to go put pull a newsletter off the no. shelf and send that out with a with a a standard article and a recipe. That's not unique. Everybody else has that. You know, you have to because find a way to be a little different. What you just said is exactly what we're talking about. You said you had to put your own flavor on it, your mm -hmm. own stamp. That is your brand. And if you, once you identify you're that, brand, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Once you identify that, you're good. Another part of branding is identifying who you're actually targeting. So we just kind of talked about niches for a little bit and what you would like maybe to do and what you, you can, you can, um, you know, where you can find your clients. You got to figure out what your ideal client is, right? So if you haven't done that in your business, you need to sit down and do that, right? Jan O'Brien started doing a mailer to non-owner occupied homes, right? Which have you done that in the past? I'm sure that you've done everything in the past, but I mean, yeah, that not, really but on? that was one of the things I decided to go to because I felt like um, the area I was farming had a percentage of people that maybe didn't know, and maybe had I had a better chance because maybe they didn't all know a real estate agent. That's why I chose it, to be honest. And it worked. It did work. <laughs> 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 and I think it will continue to work because now you're going to build trust and loyalty through that group of people. That you well, to your point, now what I'm going to do is I introduce myself, then they're consistently going to get something. And I'm going to try to drive those folks to come to the channel where I will have monthly videos on the neighborhood I'm farming. That's right. Here's what's going on in this neighborhood. And then here it is again next month, you know. It's that consistency, right? You mentioned that it's it's being clear about who you are, but then you have to be consistently getting your message out there somehow. And I think the cool thing about that is giving a home, a, a owner, an investor, whoever it is that owns that property that doesn't live in it, right? It's giving them a a well, like you said, a monthly kind of snapshot into what's happening with their investment. You know, and it's about you know, them, right? It's yeah, not about it is me, all about them. them. That's what it's all about. We say this over and over and over again. It's the whole whiff them thing. It's like, what's in it for me, people? And most, not, I'm not, I don't want to categorize and say most realtors, but a lot of realtors focus on them, on themselves and what they are doing. And, and what they provide is great, but you need to be thinking the other way around always. If you don't know what your business and how, what your, your perception is, Ask past clients. Heck, ask your family. Ask your friends. They'll be able to tell you what your brand is pretty quickly, I would say. Right. So yeah. do that introspection. You know, go in and figure out what's going on with you. That that is, if you just sit down and did that alone and then started really realizing the way you're perceived by others, that'll get your brand going right there, I would dare say. So it's it's about being different in a way. It's about standing out. But let me tell you something, and I think you would agree with me on uh, Jan on this one. It's not about being different for different sake. It's about really finding what your passion is and doing something about it. Yes, because people can pick up if it's real or not. If you it's have to if, be it, authentic, if you're right. faking it, you have to be authentic. Yes. 
Absolutely. I agree with that. I know. So it really is more about a uh, uh, more than just the look and feel like we we're just talking about. You need to be yourself. What I love about Jan and video, and Jan talks about this when we do any workshops, how you just got to get over your old damn self, right? And you need to start doing it. I didn't it. like it at first. I was like, that we have look been, like, we've been working, yeah, like. Yeah, we've been working Ugh. together with WBNL now for six years, going on seven years, right? And we didn't do video a lot in the very beginning. My friend, we didn't do any video right in the very beginning, but we started doing it. And neither of us really, well, I'm a little more of a ham than you are, but neither of us jumped in wholeheartedly. And But once you did, I would love to go back. And I always love to, to talk about this. When you go back to like podcast number one and compare it to podcast number 193. I think I'm better of, at smiling. <laughs> there's a little bit of growth that happens during that time, right? So going Having back fun, to, not being so serious. Yeah, going back to, to video number one, to the video that you just did. I'm, I told you this the other day when I was talking to you. That video that you just did um, about getting more client reviews and... Uh, um, yeah, just it, refreshing your it, uh, online profiles. It, yeah, your profiles. That's what it was, your online presence. I, you were so relaxed and so, just so natural in that video. I, 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 well, I watched it a couple times because it was just so, and it's going to be up, by the way, on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow, actually. Oh, okay. Uh, I, was, I was like, oh, I don't, I, I haven't watched the final version of that. It's I, just, maybe I should it's, go see it. It's just really good. And to the whole point of becoming yourself and being yourself, it's vitally important that you do that because it does come off. Jan's videos are always good, but they're getting better and better and better as time goes on. And you Matt, I'm Matt I, I watch Matt to see how he's going to have some fun with it. To the computer. <laughs> yeah, because I, I can't just sit there and do that. I have to be a little bit of a cornball. I'm going to tell you, I was I did a video, one of my Canva videos on, um, was awesome. uh, on a Christmas thing. And I created this whole song and I sang a song during the video. It's brilliant. Uh, but I didn't end up airing that because once I saw that, I'm like, okay, that's just a step. Now, see, can I just say that is like really getting vulnerable and throwing something in, and that probably would make it be even more watchable. So see I was that? All, but I that's was what all... we're talking about here, guys. It's like yeah. you just get over your bad cell. You get better as you go. If you're going to do video, no, it doesn't have to be YouTube. You could be, you know, on one of the other channels where you're doing short form video. There's a lot of work that goes into putting a YouTube video together. You know what I'm going to do? I didn't air that uh, that song, but I'm going to do this. Just Will you, you do a see, clip? You, you want to <laughs> see um, uh, Put Yourself Out There, what Put Yourself Out There looks like? Yes. I'm going to put a clip of that in our show notes this week. So go okay. back to our show notes and you will hear Matt Emerson singing. Um, it's the 12 Days of Christmas. I rewrote it, though. Uh, about, oh, no, no. Uh, I want to get this all now. The things. So go check that out. Okay. <laughs> point is you got to be yourself right yes if you don't and that yourself, is you by the way and you do like to sing and, and do all that it's all fun yeah <laughs> i like it you know yeah exactly but i so, like where you're going with this talk right now because you're getting to the part now where you do all this deep soul searching all these steps that matt's just talking about then you get to the how is it going to look and feel and and all that right yeah you know? because I think you don't that, go in and go like, let me pick a logo. Let me hire somebody to create a house logo for me. And let me pick my favorite colors. And this is who I am. And it's boring. You know, your, your, your ethos is not professional and honest and integrity. I mean, that comes with the territory. All of us need to be that, you know, it's like dig deeper and really come up with what this is and, and just have it be a reflection of you. But it takes a little work to figure this out. If you haven't, it, if you haven't done the work, on it your totally company. does. Because when people start to go down that path and you and I have talked about this many times in the company we were in together mm -hmm. and we talked about it when we started WBNL coaching too, mm -hmm. when you start. And I remember when we did this, it was actually kind of fun when we laid that, we had all of the, actually, I think the, is when we did Home Connect America. We had all of those um, post-it notes yeah. and we had done this whole exercise and what we are and what we stand for, you know? And even when I look back on that, it was, a lot of it was pretty uh, cookie cutter stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we all it, ought to have the same, those categories or else you shouldn't be in business, right? Right. And I, I really believe that we have even more to a point now where it's completely different. If you really are, are figuring out what you are and who you are, and that's why you need to do that work first before you get to the colors and the logo and all that kind of stuff. Because I am, I'm a pretty serious guy and I am a hard worker and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, I just like to have fun. So if my brand and my logo and my essence 
and what I'm delivering to people isn't about having kind of a good time. And you know, no, one's, no one is going to get to me and I'm going to be like Mr. Engineer by the book. That's not me. So if I, I those are not the people that I want to attract. Wow. You know what, Matt, that is a, a, important be, what you're saying, because as I like to look at our podcast logo, for example, that's a great example of a reflection of something that is fun and inviting and uh, a reflection of who we are. Cause just in the script, in the font style, the yep. font choice, you can come across without anybody knowing anything about you. You can uh, embody like what that first initial reaction is to the colors, to the, to the, all of it. Would you agree? I mean, you know, from the totally logo agree. to whatever. Yeah. Because if you're, if you are someone that wants to come off more easygoing, more uh, just, I, I'm not like your friend, although I guess in a way you do kind of want to be the friend of your clients, mm -hmm, right? You know but what you're I mean? inviting or it's, a, it, it, there's a, some kind of a fun approachable. That feeling. is right. That is going to be a much different font type that's going to be a different color mm -hmm. scheme it than is. um versus than like would... luxury high end that's right you know very uh, uh you know whatever the word you're looking for that just looks a little bit more polished or something and you want to come across that way there's a way to have that look because a lot of times people will go into it with a set mind like i and what it usually is you identify something that you like right so there's a, a color scheme that you might like out there that probably is not going to reflect the kind of personality that you actually have. So you need to do it the other way around. And I, I know that once again, this isn't rocket science, but for crying out loud, people do it the right way. And then mm -hmm. you do it once and then you refresh as time goes on. Sure. But, oh my God, there's nothing worse than branding and then rebranding and then rebranding and rebranding because that's just a nightmare. Then you're just losing all of your branding power as time goes on. As we did our rebrand, we kept the bones of what our brand was. You know, our logo changed pretty dramatically. You might not know it if you're not someone that's lived with it for seven years, but it was a very different logo than it was seven years ago, right? Even but to that point, you, when you've done studying on this, it's interesting to watch how some brands have evolved over time, sure. you know, like just, just slight changes in their fonts or the way their logo looks or whatever to reflect maybe the growth of where the company is going. And I think we've done that as well. And I got to throw something in real quick before we carry on with anything else. Don't, this is just a real estate disclaimer as a, as a longtime broker, make sure you do not waste your time and energy on um, do check your local regulations in your state regarding names and things, especially if you like you're a team. Um, I know many people who have had to spend thousands of dollars because they called themselves like Jan O'Brien Realty Group. Right. Um, you know, using the word realty or an associates, every state generally has something some states are starting to change that uh in folks that i work with around the country if you're a team you can only have certain things so be aware of that because if you don't get up to speed with that and then you go do all this stuff that's where you're going to have to go back and that's going to go over it here i know like all the things that you can hit to brand that you have to do it could be thousands of dollars absolutely so do the homework make sure you're uh w and then go to your company your broker exactly. and make sure you're following the brand guides for your company, okay? Which you may and, have that if you're a franchise. And to the point that I was making right at the very beginning, you know, you are, you are, you, you're already part of a brand, most of you, right? You're mm -hmm. gonna be a part of the Kellers, the Fidacities, the Realty One Groups, the Remax, you're gonna be a part of something already. And you may have to follow their brand guidelines. So, you know, right. I don't wanna box you in, but there's a way to do that even with their, their standards, make it to, you know, bring it down to, to what your flavor is. If yeah. you can't play with the colors, perhaps, you can certainly play with the fonts and everything for your own personal branding and all of that kind of stuff. Exactly. So just there's a way to get around that, but you have to remember that you really are already part of a brand and you have to respect that or go, go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, that's an opportunity, right? That's a great point. You know, I, you have I'm to... gonna tell you, uh, when I first got into real estate, and it's like everybody. It's like, what are you going for? What you know? It was like I wanted to make sure there was training because I wasn't, you know, didn't you know, I didn't know anything. First thing yeah. about any of that, right? So training was a really big thing. But I have to say, the colors of the company that I picked made a difference in my selection. It just did. So there's something about that, you, you know. And maybe, and maybe that's because I always just look at that kind of stuff anyway. Yeah. But it, I, one of the reasons, I, I never will forget, Lauren. I made that uh, that we made a joke out of it for the longest time. Why did you pick first team real estate? I like their signs. 
literally, that's what we had said about why I chose first team. Now, was that the only reason why I chose first team? No, but was it one of the reasons? Well, and it was yeah. also their market share, their training. They were known for all those things. Yeah, but it was also their signs, and I'm yeah. not kidding when I and say their that. colors. Uh -huh. Yeah, so there's that. I mean, you know, what I mean, that is it is blue? Is it like blue and it's blue and gold? Yellow? It's very blue similar and gold. to what our home connect America colors were. It's blue and gold. Very that's interesting. Right. I knew it was okay. <laughs> anyway, there is something to all of that. I I I, I find the whole thing fascinating. If you are refreshing or creating your brand for the first time, remember there's no rush to this. You don't have to do it this week. You need to be thinking about it. And that's the important thing about it. So go through those processes, right? Think about what all of this and then start thinking about the colors. We're going to talk about that, a little bit of that in just a second. Um, and, and you can do it one at a time. You, you know, we have a checklist for you that we're going to be uh, giving you on our downloads. Today. Yes. It's, a brand, it's a branding checklist. And it really is, there's never going to be a checklist that has every possible thing that you can yeah, think about out there. But this branding checklist has a, a plethora of things on it that will help guide you through things and help you think about other things you might be doing. But you could rebrand your website, you could rebrand your blog, your, your social media presence, all the stuff you will eventually need to do, but do the things that you are focused on the most first. And then you can start doing the other things as well. We have been talking ad nauseum this year about focusing your, your attention into one or two things or three things, right? And exactly. really focusing on those, those particular items. That doesn't mean all the rest of it goes away. It just means focus on the things that are going to drive the most business to you and that you are the most passionate about. Brand those things first and then go back in and start branding the other stuff as you go along. And then let your whole thing kind of savor and stew and, and, and um, it will, you know, boil over to something great. You're, let it develop over time, I guess, really is the point. So anyway, all, all of that. But it's important to make sure that you are giving it some thought, not jumping into it. I know everyone jumps into that branding in a certain way because we did it too. Because <laughs> that's what you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you get down to actually building your colors, doing all of those type of things, you know, we already have our clarity right? We know we're going to be consistent. And if you don't know how to be consistent, we've got 10,000 videos and you know 193 podcasts that will tell <laughs> you how to do that and about the communication <laughs> in your business, all of that. When you get down to choosing colors and doing all that type of stuff, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. If you have kind of a little bit of a marketing uh, a bug in you or you're something that you've done in a past previous uh, career, uh, we recommend Canva. Canva is a program that we use all the time. It's Canva. Well, you can, I'll put a link in the show notes and you can go and check it all out. It's there. You can get a free, um, a free trial to it. Canva is a great program to do, uh, anything uh, design work. Yeah. Really literally anything design work. If you're not a, a professional person, a professional Photoshop user and a professional exactly. graphic artist, right? Uh, it is a fantastic program. We've been using it for seven years now. We have literally thousands of designs in Canva and um, it's a great way to stay on brand. It's so like a power I offer, user. Do we get some yeah. kind of award for how many things you've put into Canva? I know we, we do have a lot. Uh, <laughs> we do have, I did a video and it's up on our YouTube channel. It's called Create Your Brand Kit in Canva. If you are a Canva user or if you are interested in you know getting in and kind of building your own thing, which actually I would suggest, even if you're going to go off and pay someone to do your logo later, Go into Canva and play around with the ideas that you like and kind of play yeah. around with the colors that you like. That's the beautiful thing about this is mm -hmm. it is very user friendly and it allows you the opportunity to to just play with things. There are so many features in Canva and I'll tell you one from a brand standpoint um, that is really, really helpful. It's like there is a picture of something that you really resonate with, or there is a community, or there is just any, just take a photo. You can add a photo into Canva and then it will color match the colors in That's there amazing. and pull out a whole color palette for you. So if there's something that you particularly gravitate to, or you decide is kind of your ethos, and, there, and, and it can be captured in an image, throw that image in and it's gonna give you a brand palette right there. Right. And then you'll just decide if you like it or not. You can go on from there. But that's just one of the things in Canva that's available. They have logo templates. They have all kinds of palettes to choose from all of the fonts that you could probably ever think of. Or if you have your own font that you want to upload into Canva, you can do that, too. So it's a powerful program. I really suggest you go do that. The link in the show notes will take you there to get a free trial uh, to see what Canva is all about. So go check that out. But then you can go to, you know, if you're going to go pay someone, there's 99 designs. Fiverr is a great uh, example for you. Jan, do you have any other? Um, no, those you can just Google it. Like there's yeah. a logo guru or something, something like that. 
Um, you, there's places where they'll do a contest basically and you'll, the freelance guys, you pay so much for a package and you get three or four people will present designs for you. That's how we've done it a few times. Right. And it's fun. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it really is a fun process, but at the same time, there are so many templates in Canva that you can play off of. And yeah, honestly, we didn't have that when we first went, No, we didn't. you know, and I, I like that idea, Matt, of going in and looking, you may find something because if you do go choose to hire somebody to help you, you'll have done some homework because what they want you to do is go, what are the things that you like? That's yeah. part of the design uh, consultation. They are a good, a good uh, designer is going to ask you you know, about these things, like, who are you? What do you stand for? You know, what's your unique value proposition? And then ask you about things that you like so that they can try to embody what, what your, your essence is. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I really would suggest doing that. Um, even if you are going to go out to do, you could go down the rabbit hole of things, but you know, that's, what's fun about it too. You get in there and you can, you know, you can like, wow, here's another thing. And here's another thing. And yeah, can be a little, that can, paralyze people a little bit but at the same time there's so many options and there's so many cool tools and if you don't know how to do any of that go to the youtube channel uh for wbno coaching and look at matt's playlist on canva he's got so many cool videos to give you you know you can just see what you want to learn about he's done a ton of them on just and I, every time he does one i'm like i didn't know canva could do that <laughs> what I know. That's another thing it can do. The right. beautiful thing about Canvas, they're always upgrading and enhancing their program too. Right. It really is pretty phenomenal. And it's funny, I have been seeing Canva come up in more and more um, uh, with other businesses to referring people to Canva. We have a, a swag shop called, uh, we, uh, the company is called Spreadshirt. And uh, I just noted, I got an email from them the other day that talked about, hey, now is the time to, to go out and uh, you know create some new swag we recommend using Canva. It was really- And then they probably have a link to send the Canva yeah. design over to Spreadshirt. So interesting that they have all that. So all that's gonna be, you know, it, it, the company keeps growing. So, we're, we're, you know, we're not official Canva. Uh, uh, they're not a sponsor of us, but I, I'm telling you, we recommend them uh, day and night. I'm not gonna go into, you know, how you pick your colors and everything, because we, I think what, I hope what I'm trying to drive home is, you just don't go that's out unique. and start just randomly picking it. You figure out what you are and they're gonna naturally come. They're gonna naturally come. That's just the way that's going to work for you. So, you know, mm -hmm. and there's a million places you can go, but where I would really start, yeah, I just mentioned it, go to our YouTube channel, look at those Canva videos that I've already done. And then we have a bunch of free courses on our website too, that um, we'll kind of just talk about the real estate business in general. But yeah. in there, there's a lot of information about branding, a lot of information about finding your niche, a lot of information that will really help you focus in on what's going to be your path in your business. And we talk about all of that a lot in all of our courses. We have an agent fundamentals course um, that you can jump into. We have a social media and online presence course that actually touches on a lot of this stuff too. So you should check that out. And then today, like I mentioned, you will be able to get uh, through the link in the show notes below, a link to our brand checklist, which is going to guide you through the things that places that you need to be aware of that you need to go into brand. And remember with branding, it's not just about things online. There are a ton of things that you come into contact with on a daily basis in your business that is still paper like your business card, because I know a lot of you, most of you still have business cards out there. Mm -hmm. uh, any, If you have any sort of leave behind presentations or flyers or any of that kind of stuff, all of that needs to be branded to letterhead that you're going to send out. I know a lot of people do most things by, um, by computer, but just remember that there are things that will need to be branded that are not uh, uh, online. And we're going to give you references in there, not to mention when you are online, that it's not just your stuff. It's all the real estate portals too. Zillow, yes. Realtor.com, Homelight, all of those that you're going to have to go in and, and do your thing on. And yeah. that's all in that checklist he put together for you. It's all in the checklist. How handy. Um, I do want to remind you that what we talked about today was just part of a workshop we did called the 15 Real Estate Essentials to Compete and Win in 2022. Um, and to watch the replay of that entire workshop, this was just one of the things, uh, one of the 15, uh, you can go uh, over to our private Facebook page. It's um, called Dream Builders. To join our Dream Builders Facebook page, you just go to our website. If you're watching online or watching on the computer right now at the top of our website, there's a big green button that says join Dream Builders. Click on that button. You can go in and join. When you join, you get free access to all of our free uh, courses, all of our free downloads instantly. So you can get a, uh, a, a instant access to all those. But then also you will be in our Facebook group and you can uh, watch the replay of the video. Uh, it, there was a ton of information in that video and it's uh, it will really give you a jump start. So if you're spending the last couple of weeks kind of slowing down and enjoying the rest of the year, that would be a good, like something you can do is you 
you know, cuddle up and grab a cup of coffee and learn how to compete and win in 2022. So go over to <laughs> and do that. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually taking my own advice and working on, I've started it and I'm taking a couple days off uh, coming up here and I'm going to work on exactly that, putting my 2022 game plan together and keeping it simple, but staying super focused and putting a marketing plan together with the help of my friend here. It's been uh, really Matt. fun, Dan. It's been fun watching what you've been doing in Florida since September, you know, just kind of starting up something new because we talk, we've been talking about this and you've been doing it in Vegas for a long time too, about, you know, actually being boots on the ground, but to go into a new territory and, and, and really start from scratch. It's been, it's been a great learning experience. I know for you, definitely, but for me as well. I'm excited because I feel like we're just, we're just getting started. Yeah. There's good yep. stuff on the horizon. So we'll put a, a bunch of links in the show notes of the things we already talked about, but it's also to some of Jan's um, uh, new uh, 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 online platforms too. You can kind of get an idea of what Jan's doing in her business. So, all right, Jan O'Brien. So what do we got going on for the next month, next uh, rest of the month? What's, what's going on next week? Uh, we, uh, I think, you know what, we're going to, I want to talk about something that I've actually been working on and it's going to make me get it all done, which is this whole real, it's been on my list for our team in Vegas. And now I really realize how much I need it. And it's this whole idea of before, during, and after we're going to talk mainly before and during with, um, a, con a, a really strong setting expectations with your buyers and sellers. And then mo most importantly, how can you leverage tech? How can you leverage some systems that you have so that all, and if you don't have an assistant yet, and that's what I'm experiencing, the reality of having to do so many tasks. So I want, I have found a way to make it a lot, um, a lot more automated, but at the same time, really create this customer experience that people are like, wow. Okay. Because I, you know what, I'm, I'm working with a whole bunch of different people, Matt, and you don't want to ever underestimate how much people need to be communicated with. Yep. So even though you told them something verbally in a meeting, people only get 10% of what you're saying. So you've got to have it back up with guides and checklists and things that you might be doing to help somebody through the process. It's very stressful buying and selling real estate, as we all know. And sometimes I think we forget, even if somebody bought a house before that they want to have the confidence and they want to feel good about you're on top of it. And we're going to talk about how you can ha make that happen Thanks. without pulling your hair out. It does take some work, but we have, of course, you know us, we're going to share templates and ideas with you. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, coming up as we end the year. It's awesome. these systems I'm putting in place. I want it for our team as well. We didn't, these are the last bit of systems that I had not ever really gotten in place and always said I wanted to. Now I'm doing it. So that's here we awesome. go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So it's going to be a good one next week. Uh, and then the week after that, last uh, podcast of the year, we're going to do a recap of 2020. It's our annual yeah, year exactly. in review. Yeah. And I think, we should it. Do it a, I think we should do it a little bit differently, this Jan O'Brien. I think between now and then we should get together and we should come up with maybe five or five or ten, I don't know, maybe ten different things. And then you and I should list off our top three of each thing. Okay. Well, you let me know what those are and we'll do I'll, it. I'll that's think always about, fun. We'll think about that a little bit more, but let's have some fun with that because we're coming out of, we're, well, we're not really <laughs> totally coming out of the pandemic yet. It sounds like a new world. <laughs> some, some places are kind of scary, but life is certainly returning to normal and um, uh, it'll be interesting to kind of talk about because a lot has changed in the last And let's see what 2022 is going to bring us because I frankly think it's uh, the beginning of, I mean, I said 2022 for Florida. Half of my things said 2022. I made it happen in 2021. So I'm feeling like 22 is the year. Of course, I know we say that every year. 2022 is our year. But I'm well, telling you right now, it is going to be my year. It's, it's, I don't know. As long <laughs> as you're go. happy during all of the, the trials and tribulations, it's a good all thing. Good. So that's all right. All right, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Be forever wandering, but not